Hi, everyone. I'm Terrence Yang from SageWise, uh, Chief Strategy Officer. Uh, we are dispute resolution for smart contracts. A little bit about me. I've been in crypto since 2014, and I was a securities lawyer on Wall Street and worked on securitizations as well. Whoops. <laughs> OK. So um, as an advisor and angel to startups, I often tell folks when they do a presentation, doesn't matter where it is, have one slide that's a takeaway slide. People can take pictures and remember kind of the key points. So for us, this is our executive summary, one slide. And we're going to talk about smart contracts, which are what? Auto-executing software where a lot of developers think code is law because of smart contracts. Hi, Brian. And um, you, smart contracts are contracts that are built by software developers, not attorneys. But if you think about it, right, one of the issues is going to be, well, what happens if things go wrong, whether it's Parity or Polkadot? And that's when people might resort to lawsuits and so forth. So that's one thing we're trying to avoid with SageWise. The smart contract market is exploding. I'll, I'll talk about numbers later. And they often fail, Parity, Polkadot, and so forth. Dispute resolution will help increase people's confidence in transactions. So you know what you're getting. You know that what you intended to have is what will be the outcome. So you don't have these unfair outcomes where very clever developers or attackers figure out subtle attacks that they can do, subtle issues with the code, and take advantage. We have a new SDK that just came out this week, and we have paying customers. Our team includes two attorneys, our CEO's Amy Wan, who is very experienced in both securities law and startups, and she's fantastic. And the CTO is Dan Rice, who is um, one of the nicest, most uh, kind of communicative CTOs I've ever met. He's great. And we're also hiring. Please follow my boss, Amy Y. Wan, on LinkedIn for the latest um, job listings. So, Smart contracts have exploded, but we've had over a billion dollars lost in them just last year. 12% of Ethereum is currently locked up, or Ether is currently locked up in smart contracts, and we have over a million smart contracts just today. They're vulnerable and don't provide transactional confidence, and we've seen this with uh, the parity hack, Polkadot, and so forth, where Tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars are drained from your account. So if you're doing, you work very hard, you had a successful fundraise for your ICO, and then you want to get your Ethereum, but someone comes in and takes it, that's not a great feeling and pretty disastrous. Our target market um, is currently focused on financial services and insurance, so those two are sort of related and supply chain cross-border trade. And the last is digitized assets and consumer marketplaces. We have uh, partners already. And how it works is this. If you have a smart contract that's going wrong, SageCoin, and this is what our SDK does, it enables you to freeze the execution of the smart contract. So before your smart contract is drained of all your ETH, you, you can freeze it, and then parties then will resolve the dispute using third-party vendors, right, who are going to be rated just like on Yelp, just like uh, vendors are rated on Amazon. And uh, you, basically, the idea is you pre-agree. Before you enter into the smart contract, you, can, you and your contracting party, your counterparty, can agree the uh, vendor you want to pick. So if you have a lot of many, many, many uh, $50 disputes, you're going to have something that might be more automated or automatic or very low cost, a dispute resolver. But if, you have, if you're talking about millions of dollars in smart contracts, people are going to want what? Probably a human being, maybe former lawyers or current lawyers, maybe former judges or arbitrators to kind of help resolve the dispute. Also, sit, all of this sits on a digital jurisdiction. If you're in China or Russia or Brazil, and I'm in the US, and you and I are contracting together, 
normally, because I used to do this on Wall Street, normally we would debate um, when I was at Morgan Stanley, for example. Morgan Stanley wants New York law to apply. We would have special provisions that required you to sue us in, uh, in um, a um, Manhattan federal court. No jury trial, no state courts. We wanted Manhattan federal courts because we thought they were the most experienced and saw the most uh, financial contracts. We were less likely to have bias against us and get kind of hopefully a fair hearing. Um, but now with smart contracts that are very cross-border and we're all creating this new ecosystem, we like a world where we can resolve things through the blockchain on, the, on digital jurisdiction as well. And the last part, which we're working on because, and, and this is shifting, right? Because the SEC has said what? that most ICOs, they haven't quite said this, but Chairman Clayton from the SEC has said he's never seen an ICO that's not a security. Recently, he talked about how hypothetically you could have ICOs that are not securities. So if you have ICOs that are securities, what does that mean for US retail? It means if your users are US retail people, even though they're not investors, but they're, they have these tokens, it's harder for them to transact. So that's something we're sussing out. Okay, so our recommendation to you is before an attack drains your Ethereum or whatever valuable thing you're supposed to get based on the execution of the smart contract, you might want to consider imposing time lock delays. That'll postpone the transactions long enough so that a human being can review them. So if you have a $5 million at stake that's about to be moved from you to your counterparty, and it doesn't look right, you should be able to stop it, right? Right now, if you're a customer of American Express, you can stop things uh, when there's suspicious activity. They will even call you and be like, hey, are you actually in XYZ country? Because normally you're in San Francisco or Alameda or whatever, and this, these charges don't look right, right? So your credit card company does that, we think for now, Look, we all want transactions to be final. We all believe in the crypto economy. That's why we're here. But in the real world, people are used to being able to dispute things and being notified of things that are suspicious or don't seem to make sense. So what was the deal and what was the original intent of the parties? And you know, if you and I agree to agreement, there's all these emails and texts and telegram and whatever about what the deal was, that should be reflected in the code. And only 1% of the world can read code to understand smart contracts. Similarly, what we have currently, 1% of the world are lawyers who can read legal contracts. So we're just shifting kind of one exclusive group to another. It's important to have something that reflects what people agree to. So the pending execution needs to match uh, the intent, and it's hard to catch every little nuance, subtle flaw, and so forth. That's why these attacks keep happening. This is our technical roadmap. I just want to point out that we have been on track three months in a row, and our dispute resolution SDK I'll talk about very soon. So I talked about our team a little bit. They're fantastic. And our advisors, uh, just to point out real quick, Colin Rule is former head of dispute resolution at eBay and PayPal. Jillian Hadfield is an expert in legal systems, and that's kind of what we're building if you think about it, legal systems for crypto. And our last um, advisor is the co-founder and CEO of Republic, which is an angelist company. It's fantastic for equity crowdfunding. So the SageWise Ethereum SDK for smart contracts launched this week, and we have, we, we, we're basically saying that contracting parties can agree up front on how they want disputes resolved. Sometimes you might say, no, it's just final, right? Simple smart contracts, usually you don't need it. But as smart contracts get more complicated, more and more uh, issues might come up. You have to test the code in real life to make sure the code actually works. So it's OK, but maybe there should be some uh, way for people to get what they wanted while they're using this uh, complicated, increasingly complicated code. So our SDK offer release says that any function in the smart contract can be frozen. And the contracting parties, if, if I don't like the way the 
the contract is being executed, I could freeze it, but that's all I can do. And then once I freeze it, that's when the third party vendor that we agree to sign up with, that's when that vendor can actually see what we agree to. They get a general idea, right, initially, but they don't get the details because they don't need it for privacy reasons. And then um, the, the goal is to have the contracting parties fix any issues so you can avoid litigation and avoid results where your ETH is completely drained and that's not the deal. Some caveats, the SDK launch is an alpha. It's Ethereum based only for now, we're agnostic, but it was just easier to build something uh, for the, the ETH people. And it's a hello world version. All it does for now is just freeze your smart contract. You can read about it on Medium and please, please join our telegram, t.me slash sagewise to get updates and to discuss. Um, that's it. Thank you.